it's all fucking bullshit. Like, are you gonna let elitist scum just use their money, silence voices, silence the truth, and just shove fake narratives up your ass? And this is all about being Canadian. Do you really want to live in a city where the mayor of the city, with all his money, can silence other candidates? That's an insult to you, me, and anyone, and anyone in the future running for elections. Jeff Schatz here. My opinion about some of the controversy going on here in Toronto regarding our 2018 Toronto mayor candidate, Faith Goldie, and some of the hypocrisies that just are going on in my city. That just pisses the shit out of me. Like, it's just fucking bullshit. Faith Goldie's not a neo-Nazi. Back about a couple of years ago, she went to Charlottesville. Uh, she did some journalism and recordings of what was going on. It was a protest called Unite the Right Rally. Uh, it was basically a group of people that were saying that their voices are being oppressed and a lot of fake narratives were being pushed about them. Uh, a lot of the mainstream media would call it a white supremacist rally or a neo-nazi rally. She also then appeared on Daily Stormer which has been labeled as a white supremacist podcast. Faith Goldie also while in Charlottesville went on several podcasts uh, and interviewed a lot of different media type uh, venues. Faith Goldie, she interviews everything. She doesn't just silence or leave things out. So she went on the Daily Stormer um, I listened to the whole podcast to myself and I couldn't find anything racist going on in that podcast. I got nothing out of that. Nothing racist, nothing neo-Nazi. And then Faith Goldie expressing her observations from being in Charlottesville, which she backs up with video evidence, so I don't know what people are getting at. There's this documentary I watched that, that kind of really changed my opinion about media a lot. The Untold American History by Oliver Stone. Basically, long story short, with that documentary, and it's well documented, backed up with evidence, is that from generation to generation, and time, time again, and from the past, and probably in the future, uh, the tactic of calling people names or calling people racist is a strategy used usually by globalists and socialist agenda to silence ideas and to silence the truth. It's being employed right now against Faith Goldie, and it mirrors a lot of about what happened in World War II, and a lot of historians have documented this type of tactic, and it's going on right now in my city. Faith has been silenced. Their all news stations are boycotting her, uh, not really giving her anything other than some very, very untrue news articles and opinion pieces being written about her, so that's atrocious. Like, our news stations, like Bell Media, they're a public trust. They must, during elections, give airtime to our mayor candidates. That's a violation of CRTC guidelines. And when you, when you look at the ad that she was trying to run, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Nothing racist, nothing hateful, nothing that is, can be considered hate speech, which is what people call things these days to silence ideas. Uh, right now, Faith Goldie is actually in the process of submitting an application to the courts to compel Bell Media to follow the law and stop this unjust silencing of Faith Goldie. By the way, they gave no reason. And usually when they don't say anything, that doesn't really help you. I can, or coincidentally, John Tory is a shareholder of Bell Media and he's also running for mayor and has, Bell Media is now telling Faith Goldie, sorry, uh, we can't run your ads, no reason. Those migrants that Justin Trudeau let in, one, some of them are staying in the Radisson Hotel northeast of Toronto, and uh, they're trashing that place. They're trashing it, and it looks disgusting. As well, uh, it's allegedly they're writing on the wall, free money. So, do you judge for yourself? I'm gonna link a source to that as well. But if you wanna be played for a fool, then just just ignore everything Faith Goldie says. I know a lot of people are afraid to associate themselves with Faith Goldie because 
the tactics working. You call her a neo-Nazi, you call her a racist, people are afraid to even say that they support her. I may not 100% agree with all of her ideas, but I certainly am not going to silence someone just because I disagree with their ideas, especially if their ideas are not illegal or breaking any kind of law. I don't want to ever live in a world where I'm just stuck around a group of people that are of the same type and the same ideas. I like to see several ideas and I like to see everyone's ideas at the table and that's how we figure out what's a good idea. I want to get into the 14 words. The 14 words is one of the main things that's being used against Faith Goldie to say that she's a neo-Nazi. Faith has addressed this on several occasions and the 14 words were a coin slogan from a guy named David Lane who was a white supremacist neo-Nazi that was convicted of some terrible crimes. Uh, but today those words don't really mean as much anymore. Those 14 words at face value, there's nothing hateful or racist about them. It's really just a survival statement. Faith has actually did a hypocritical double standard video where she shows how replacing the word white, which is the bad word apparently, with any other race, like Aboriginal, um, everyone was okay with it. Everyone's okay with the 14 words as long as you replace the word white with any other race. Faith proves it very well in her video. She wants to preserve Western culture, which in my opinion is the one of the best cultures out there. We all live in Western culture because we like it. If you don't like Western culture, go try some of the other cultures out and tell me what you think. She denounces white supremacy and neo-Nazism and she has a lot of Jewish followers, uh, like Laura Loomer. Laura Loomer is Jewish. As well, if you guys watched my video of the global news protest, there were Jewish supporters there. So if she's a neo-Nazi, why are Jewish people following her? Why do people of all cultures, cultures follow her? I'll tell you why. Because they didn't just listen to the first headline and believe it. They probably did some research and the Muslim conference on Facebook said, uh, everyone's invited, all who wish to seek the knowledge can come and see. So Faith Goldie and Laura Loomer went to the conference with their invitation saying that all was invited and as soon as they got there, and they recorded this too, uh, they were told at the door, sorry Muslims only, police take these people away. Uh, not very inclusive, not, uh, very deceptive, and What's even more appalling, Linda Sarsour, or whatever her name is, she's a propaganda spitting piece of garbage. As well as there's a couple of other guys there that believe, or believe to have links to uh, terrorism. Uh, there's a connection with uh, terrorist funding. This organization lost their charitable status because they were linked with funding ISIS and all sorts of radical Islamic groups, such as Sharia law. And when it comes to Sharia law, I don't know why people in the LGBT community are against Faith Goldie or are immediately just appalled by her. She's against Sharia law. People from LGBTQ communities should be against Sharia law as well. It's a very terrible, radical ideology that's not welcome in Western culture. I have friends that are Muslim and I have friends that know the Quran and I can tell you that it's pretty it's pretty scary stuff when you read the Quran and some of the scriptures in there. All right, so I just want to clear some things up and a lot of misinformation about Faith Goldie. I'm gonna leave a link below with uh, with all the sources I use to come to my decision to support Faith Goldie, and I recommend you guys check it out below.